Let's inject us. Identify independent events. Use the multiplication rule for independent events. Compute at least probabilities. Let's inject of one. Two events E and F are independent if the occurrence of the event E in a probability experiment does not affect the probability of event F. The two events are dependent if the occurrence of event E in the probability experiment affects the probability of event F. Let's look at some examples. Suppose you draw a card from a standard 52 card deck of cards and roll a die. Suppose two 40 year old women who live in the United States are randomly selected. Suppose two 40 year old women live in the same apartment complex. The events drawing a heart and rolling an even number are independent because the results of choosing the card do not impact the results of the die toss. B. The events woman number one survives the year and woman number two survives the year are independent. C. The events woman number one survives the year and woman number two survives the year are dependent. Let's objective number two. The multiplication rules for independent events. If E and F are independent events, then the probability of E and F happening at the same time is equal to the probability of E times the probability of F. Consider this experiment. A ball is randomly picked from a bag of two balls and four blue balls, and after which it is placed back into a bag and another ball is randomly picked. What is the probability that event A, both balls are red, will occur? We're going to look at this from what's called a tree diagram. Here's our first draw. It can be red or it can be blue because there are two red, two out of six, which is one-third, and there's four blue, which is four out of six, which re reduces to two-thirds. Now the second draw, it could either be red or blue if the first one's red, and if the first one is blue, the second one can be red or blue with the same corresponding probabilities. So we're looking for what is the probability that event A, both balls are red, will occur. Well, that can happen only one way. First draw has to be red, and then the second draw has to be red. Now, since these are independent trials, we use the multiplication rule. One-third times one-third is one-ninth. The probability that a random selected female aged 60 years old will survive the year is 99.186% according to the National Vital Statistics Report. What is the probability that two randomly selected 40-year-old females will survive the year? Okay, as we talked about before, these two events are independent. If we use our multiplication rule, we can compute this probability. So the probability the first one survives and the second one survives is equal to the probability the first one surviving times the probability that the second one survives. So that's 0.99186 times 0.99186, or really 0.9186 squared, which is 0.9838. A manufacturer of exercise equipment knows that 10% of their products are defective. They know that only 30% of their customers will actually use the equipment in the first year after it is purchased. If there is a one-year warranty on the equipment, what is the proportion of customers that will actually make a valid warranty claim? So we assume that the defectiveness of the equipment is independent of the use of the equipment. The probability that it's defective and also used within the first year is equal to the probability it's defective times the probability that it's used. So probability it's defective is 10%. Probability it's used is 30%. So 10% times 30% is 3%. Now the multiplication rules for more than two events is expressed here. As long as every event is independent, if we want to find all these events happening at the same time, we simply multiply their probabilities. 
the probability that a randomly selected female age 60 years old will survive the year is 99.18 percent. What is the probability that four randomly selected 60 year old females will survive the year? So the probability that all four survive means that the first one survives and at the same time the second and the third and the fourth. Since we assume all these are independent we simply multiply them. So this is the same thing as 0.99186 to the fourth power which is 96.78 percent. Lesson objective number three. The probability of at least one is equal to 1 minus the probability of none. Let's look at an example. What is the probability that at least one of the 500 randomly selected 60-year-old females will die during the course of the year? At least one means it could be one female or two females or three or four all the way up to all females which is 500. So it's going to be a lot easier using our at least rule. So the probability at least one dies is equal to one minus the probability that none of them die. So none of them dies is the same thing as that all of them survive. So all of them surviving would be 0.99186 to the 500 power which turns out to be 0.9832. So the probability that at least one female, age 60 or older, will die out of a group of 500 is more than 98%. The Challenger space shuttle was secured by six gaskets. If one failed, the space shuttle would explode, as it actually did happen. Assuming that each gasket had a 97% reliability rate and they were independent, what is the probability of the failure for that mission? Well, the probability of at least one fails is equal to one minus the probability that none of them fail. So none would fail would mean all six are working correctly. So since each one has a probability of 97 percent, that's going to be 0 0.97 to the sixth power. We want all six functioning at the same time. So that is equal to 1 minus 0.833, which is 0.167. The probability that at least one of those gaskets leaking is almost 